Live from Union Square in the heart of San Francisco. It's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit 2016. Brought to you by Databricks and IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Walls and George Gilbert. Well, welcome back to San Francisco, along with George Gilbert, who is a senior analyst at Wikibon and theCUBE. I'm John Walls, we're here on the expo floor at Spark Summit 2016 in the Hilton and uh, the heart of downtown San Fran, enjoying 3,500 attendees, a record crowd here. Looking forward to talking with Denise Nirmal, who's the Vice President of Big Data, Next Gen Platforms and Analytics at IBM Analytics. And Denise, thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. Good John. to see you. Thank you, John. Yeah, first off, just, I mean, let me get your take on this because uh, uh, once the doors opened today, it was like this madhouse rush and, and the activity, the enthusiasm hasn't subsided all day. How, how, what do you make of the show? Amazing, I mean amazing. So last year, I mean you look at the keynote, I feel like there's the double the number of folks in the keynote just to you know, show you the presence and the enthusiasm, the energy. I mean, it's just crazy, I mean. Uh, and what, so what does that say to you? I mean, because you, you've been looking at, at certainly with Spark and, and, and working with it for, for a few years now. Uh, what does that say to you about the interest that's being generated and not just casual, right. but obviously very serious uh, commitment? So it tells me that the adoption, right? I mean, we, last year when we invested in our Spark Technology Center and put 50 plus developers into it, we knew this was going to kind of start taking off and this year, it's a testament that it is taking off. There's more adoption. Our enterprise customers are seeing it. So just to give you one example, last year we hosted one of the biggest retailers in the world um, to come to our STC. It was one terabyte of data. This year they came back. It's 17 terabytes of data that they are running on Spark. Hmm. So it's just amazing. They, we feel it that customers are really picking up on it. It's a scalable platform. Uh, it's open source. Uh, you know, you can, you can get the rich set of libraries in there. So all those things are attracting the customers to come and run it. For analytics execution, this is the one, this is the platform. So, so what is it, I mean, let, let's talk about machine learning, uh, because that seems, you know, huge growth there, growth, growth opportunity for sure, uh, and where there's a lot of emerging technology being applied there. You all kind of want to be, as I understand it, you want to be like the Swiss yeah. here basically, right? You're total open source, totally committed. Right. You're making these voluntary commitments of your technology, right. um, trying to create this broad, and, and that's not even the right word, community. Right. Um, but you're, you're sharing right. you know, all the secret sauce. Right. So, so, so let, really good question. So let me take a step back, right? In the sense that what is machine learning? To me, machine learning is how do you train a model to get a predictable score or a score that's favorable, right? That is machine learning. So for us, we looked at it say, okay, how can we make sure that, for example, let's take R, which is every single customer shop that I've gone to as an R, R shop. So mm -hmm. it is getting adopted very, mm -hmm. uh, in a very accelerated space. Mm -hmm. That's why, I don't know if you guys read the announcement uh, today that IBM is going to invest in R and I'm going to be a board member at the mm -hmm. R Consortium, right? Because we see that adoption happening big time. Mm -hmm. So system ML is part of it. We contributed the code into the community because we see that we can give a rich set of libraries that folks, developers can use to build models mm -hmm. and have machine learnings done. Let's, let's sort of unpack that a little more. Now machine learning, I mean, our, our viewers are are familiar with, with the concept, but tell us how, um, we know that um, uh, Spark has Spark ML for the pipeline and ML Lib for all the machine learning libraries help rationalize you know, where system ML comes in and then the other machine learning libraries that you have from different sources. Right. So what does that broad choice start right. to look like in a coherent way? Right. So if you are a developer today, you know, you look at our vendors out there, uh, you can use Java, you can use um, uh, R, you can use, I mean, uh, Python, Scala, right? Any of those languages. And then you can use Spark ML or, or uh, System ML, right? R libraries, all those things to build your models. What we want to do in this 
you know, and, and we really believe machine learning is probably, in its, if you compare it to a baseball game, it's probably in the first inning or second inning, so there's a ways to go. So what we envision is that um, let's, let's make it flexible for the developer, right? So you want to develop in um, Python, Scala, or any languages, right? We want to give you the choice, just be it. We don't want to silo you into one thing. You want to use you know, Spark ML, you want to use System ML, you want to use R, you can do it. So the, the way we envision is that let's give the developer the choice on what language they want to use. So if we were to draw like a, a, a sort of a table, you would have the choice of libraries going on one dimension and the choice of pipelines right. on the other dimension. Right. And just to differentiate, so um, Spark, uh, Spark ML is, um, assumes that the pipeline essentially has like one model, mm -hmm. um, so that it, you know, it's a rough approximation. It either fits that model, you know, the, the problem you're trying to solve fits that model or it doesn't. Right. Where your system ML that you've contributed right. can put a bunch of models into play, so right. it, if one doesn't get it completely exactly. right, exactly. the other can finish getting it right, or right. a bunch of them. Right, so you get, you know, a, a set of rich libraries through all these uh, whether it's system ammo or you know, any of this, right? So your goal is that, so if you're a statistician, right, what do you want to do? You want to do linear regression? You pick a library and say, okay, this is what I'm going to use, this is the language I'm going to use. Some of them really code, some of them want a UI, right? So what in IBM we want to do is that how can we give the end user, the data scientist, a multitude of choices that they can pick and choose from rather than just say, you want to develop, use Python, that's all we're going to do. You use Scala, that's what you're going to do. This may be arcane, but since we're talking about unification, does it matter if, um, if the Databricks folks or the Spark community creates a notebook that knows how to deal with uh, the Spark native pipeline, mm -hmm. um, Spark ML, mm -hmm. um, where would system ML fit in that? So system ML, you can use it. We have contributed back into the community, right? So it's available, we are contributing back. So if you look at our Spark Technology Center, the two areas that we are focusing are Spark SQL, because we, you know, we have DB2 and we come with a, a good set of expertise in that area. The second piece is ML, right? So Nick Parand, who we hired, uh, you know, who's one of our committer, I mean, he is solely focused on, on the ML piece of things. So what I, we are hoping is that as this area grows and explodes, they come to us, right, for machine learning or Spark SQL expertise. IBM needs to be known saying that, okay, you know, machine learning, here are the expertise. But then we need to look at it as a community to say, you know, we are contributing it back. So we are heavily contributing and, and Spark SQL, SQL was one of our biggest contributions last year. So. Um, the the SQL contributions that you're making, um, do that does that fold into, or I should say, how does that fold into the maturation of Spark SQL? Is it better coverage, so like you can run more of the benchmarks, right. or is it a is it improving the optimizer so things run really fast? Right, exactly. So there are areas in the optimizer we have to do right the work that needs to be done. Um, how do we make sure, for example, the locking mechanism, right? I mean, how do you make sure it, it can lock once somebody's reading or writing into it, right? I mean, those kind of things. But the, I didn't know that that was even one of the use cases. I thought the, the, the interface between Spark and databases was mostly a read-only. Right, it's read-only, but I'm just saying, like, I mean, you know, if you want to do, so some customers, for example, right, I mean, they have relational database yeah. who want to lock it, right? I mean, in that, in that specific, scenario or a case, but mostly it's read-only, right? So, but what would, if I, uh, this might sound arcane, but it's important, because right now it's a, sort of a business intelligence usage scenario, right. but if you're getting into locking, you're starting to get into operational right. intelligence, right. where you're going to do some, some amount of transacting right, right. With, with a little bit of analysis. Right. Is that the direction? Right, but in this particular case, we are only talking about read-only, right? In the set, read-only. Okay. Be because, so, optimi oh. 
optimizer comes into play, right? So that's one. Yeah. Uh, the other area is that how do we make sure, like we are trying to do a TPDS benchmark to right. see how it, how it compares, what, how the queries come back, what is the performance times, right? So there's some contributions to be made there. So, so those are the areas that we are focusing on from a Spark SQL perspective okay. and ML perspective. And one last piece I do want to cover is our platform, right? So when we started talking about how do we IBM build a platform, there's three things that we looked at. One, how do we build a scalable, um, open source based architecture, right? So that's, we decided Spark is the one we want to go with. The second piece is um, how do we differentiate? Because today, you know, if you look at platform, it's there. So we said, okay, we need to bring the integration piece together, so if you're ingesting the data, like the weather channel data, you know, they can ingest about five gigs a second. How do we ingest the data, shape the data, you know, transform the data, cleanse the data, all those pieces? And then how do we do analytics on it, right? Build the model, train the model. Uh, that's where the machine learning piece comes in and then eventually visualize it. So that whole piece, what you call pipeline or the whole platform, has to be well stitched together. So that's what we're doing. And the last piece is, you know, when I talk about differentiation, today you go to AWS or SoftLayer or Azure, you have to bring the data with you and do analytics. What we want to do is like bring analyt analytics to where your data is. So I say it, the so doctor you will you don't have to transfer right. Right. the data. They, they just besides exactly. You go to it. Right. So right. Right. I say that you we'll bring deploy. the doctor to where the patient is. Yeah. You know, right. because we a house bring, call. Yeah, a house call. So we bring analytics to where the, and that clearly differentiates us, right? right? Because we will bring analytics to where the data is. So there are customers who probably are on AWS, heavily invested in S3, for example. They might not move the data. Mm -hmm. Or there are customers who are on Bluemix or software who doesn't want to move the data. How do we serve those customers, right? And that's what the platform brings is that, you know, three things. Built on open source to scale, integrated, and finally, how do we make sure we differentiate by bringing the data, I mean, the analytics to where the data is. Well, if I add one thing to see if I can sum this up. We talked uh, yesterday to um, um, the, the guy who managed all the data services. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was like he's, he came in as part of cloud and, and now he runs all the... Oh, Derek. Derek, Derek Schertl, yeah. yes. So he said the key is now they're trying to essentially orchestrate all the data platforms into a fabric yeah. and then the analytic feeds and data, you know, orchestrate those. Yeah. Now it sounds like you're one level, you're investigating and preparing to go one level above that, right. which is, you know, m modeling right. and, and training and... Yeah. Um, deploying right. things that either are offline or, or learning in real time, right. Right. and that that's the next layer up. Right, so th this morning I spent some time with a customer who wanted to do fraud detection, right? And they want to uh, train a model, and how do they make sure that the model, over time, the data degrades, right? But at the same time, how can we take the real-time scoring data, feed it back, so that the model keeps learning itself, you know, real time. We were just talking about that just before you came on with one of the product managers at Databricks. Right. Exactly that fraud app. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that, those are the kind of things, right, that will get the buzz on top of Spark is that how do we real time score and feed it back, in, called the feedback loop, so that the model is learning. Even when the scoring is low, it learns. So we are actually you know, working with a customer, a banking customer in Europe to say, how can we do that? And by September timeframe, our plan is to you know, get it up and running. And this particular customer loses about 70 million euros a year in fraud. So think about, you know, that's just one customer. So I think there's tremendous potential and running it on Spark gives us a platform to, you know, an execution piece to go run it on. So. I still like the, the notion, we talked about it a few moments ago that, um, Doctors don't make house calls anymore, right. but IBM Analytics will. Right. Uh, so good luck with that. You have a lot of houses, a lot of doors to knock on, yeah. which is a good thing. I so, know. Dinesh, thanks for joining well, us. Well, thank you, John. Thank yeah. you, George. It was a pleasure. Thank you. The Cube coverage here at Spark Summit 2016 continues in just a bit.